Hi guys, my name is Jenna Gizar. I am the founder and creative director of Blessed Is She, and I'm so excited to be tuning in with you today, wherever you are. Please share where you're tuning in from. I would love to know and be able to say hello to you. So I just wanted to pop on and kind of just chat with you, be real with you, be honest with you, get your feedback on where you're at with your prayer life. Um, and really just share with you something that's been stirring in my heart recently, which is that I've really been struggling to get in a prayer routine. I've really had a hard time um, being disciplined and sitting down and praying and being quiet and quieting myself and being, hi there, Michelle, so glad you're here. Um, just being being quiet with the Lord. Um, there are so many things happening in my life. Uh, just a little bit about me. I have a wonderful husband and we have four daughters and um, I'm also, you know, in charge of Blessed Is She and kind of doing a million things all day long with all of our amazing team that we have here at Blessed Is She. But it can be overwhelming in life to really think about where do I find the time to sit down and pray? And um, hi guys, I'm so glad you're here. Yes, Irma, come back, please. Um, so I've really just been struggling and I know so many of you guys, no matter where you're at in life, no matter if you're a young college student all the way up to a grandmother, I know that there are times in our lives and you might be in a circumstance right now where it just seems like I don't know where prayer fits in. I don't know how it could work. And so I was really just thinking today as I was in the shower, I feel like a lot of us probably have some good time to think in the shower because like no one else is talking to us and we kind of have time to digest what's going on in our lives. If you are having a hard time like I was, I highly recommend jumping in the shower and just saying like, God, what is happening in my life right now? If you feel like it's a lot, if you feel like you're in chaos, like I do much of the time. Oh my gosh. What? What? That was a Bluetooth music that just turned on. I'm so sorry. Hi guys. Um, I'm Jenna Gizar. I am the founder and creative director of Blessed She. And right now we're just kind of talking about struggles in prayer. So tell me where your biggest struggle in prayer is right now. Kind of what are you having a hard time with? Is it, um, is it time management? Is it uh, that the day is too busy, is that you don't know how to pray? What is it that you're struggling with right now? And we'll kind of just talk about it. Um, so anyway, you might be in circumstances in your life where it's just a hard season. Um, and I totally understand that. And I think the more I really try to lean into the Lord on those really crazy busy days or busy times um, or stressful moments, I just continue to hear him say, if your life is not centered on me, if I'm not the catalyst to the rest of this, it will always feel like chaos. It will always feel like your circumstances are overwhelming you. It will always feel like this is too much. If he is not the root of the rest of my life, no matter how full it is, no matter how, how potentially alone I feel, if he's not the root of that, no matter what, it will always be stressful. It will always have a lot of anxiety. It will always be hard. Um, and not to say the Christian life, knowing the Lord isn't hard. It is hard. But again, I keep going back to hearing him say over and over again, like an echo in my ear. If I am not the root, this will always feel like too much. Um, and so... I've really just felt like a huge prodding on my heart. Like I need to do this. I need to get started. I need to stop talking about it. I need to stop sharing about it with friends on how hard it is or, or only praying with friends. You know, I have really amazing friends who call me to prayer, who call me to, to answer, hey, what's the Lord doing in your life? I have really incredible friends and I, and I hope and pray for you to have that as well. But I need to stop talking about it ultimately. I need to just sit down and do it. And so I just want to talk to you about that today. If you're in that same boat, if you're in that same struggle, how is it that we can get started? So let me see some of your answers here. Setting aside time, making that time high quality, not falling asleep, that's huge. I'm totally with you. I have a hard time connecting the words with real feelings or intention. Yes, totally, Michelle. What do you mean with the words? Tell me what kind of prayers you're doing. Um, staying focused while praying the rosary, yes. I feel like my prayer is surface level right now and I want to go deeper. Oh my gosh, I'm totally with you guys. 
on all of that. So um, let's kind of get started with, I just was thinking again in the shower, what are three ways we can just get started in prayer? So number one, I really think this is important. And I think this is especially important in terms of accountability. Um, time management, yeah, totally. Yes, yes, Crystal. Um, so I think number one is looking at your day. Looking at your day and I know as much as I want to say, I don't have five minutes in my day. I don't have 10 minutes in my day. Um, I don't have an hour in my day. That ultimately, if I really look at my day, look at where my priorities are, I can find five minutes. I can find five minutes. You can probably find five minutes. Um, and I just want to encourage you to look at your day and be honest with what you're doing in your day. You guys, I'm talking to myself and I hope you understand that. Um, Cause I can just get up from my bed and spring into action. There's so much to be done. There is so much to be done and there's no time. And so I totally understand that. But I think really, if I sat down with myself, I was honest with myself and got out my, my planner and said, what am I doing? Um, I can find five minutes. So I really, I want to encourage you to get out your planner today and to look at it and to be honest and see what you have coming up this week, what you have coming up tomorrow, uh, what you have today. Let's start with today. What do you have going on today? And say, all right, Lord, not where can I fit you in, not um, where can I give you five minutes of silence as like a surrender and a giving up of I'll, I'll give up my five minutes of coffee to give you five minutes in prayer, whatever. It could be prayer with coffee. I pray a lot with that. I'm just trying to think of examples. Um, where is it that we're not just giving up time, but that we're leaning into time, that we're leaning into the Lord, not just, um, you know, where, again, where can I fit you in? It's, it's, where do you fit so the rest of this fits in? Where do you go so the rest of this works? And I think if we flip that, I think if I flip that, there's so much time. There's none of this works. None of this is a blessing. None of this feels right. None of this gives me peace. None of this, even if you're giving me, Lord, what I seemingly think I want in my life to make it feel, feel full. None of it feels like the fullness of life if he's not the root of, the, of all of it. So, um, yeah, totally. Five to ten minutes. Yes, Crystal. I love that. Oh my gosh, Bridget. I roll out of bed and fall on my knees and offer my day to God. It's a great little habit that has borne so much fruit. I love that so much. You know what I was just thinking about? Blessed is she in our shop. We have a morning offering print that um, Erica Be A Heart Design created, and it's beautiful. And I have this wall. Uh, you guys, I just moved recently, so I have a lot of wall space. I'm not very, like, interior decorating. Um, I really have always struggled with, like, having a home that feels homey. So uh, anyway, I have a lot of blank space on my walls. And I was thinking, if I just put that morning offering on my wall and I wake up and it's the first thing I see to just say, Lord, I offer you today's joys. I offer you today's blessings. I offer you my day to you, to, to the suffering that you've gone through, to your honor, to your glory. How much more will my day be blessed by that? That every single, single little annoyance that I go through, I'm saying, Lord, I offer this to you. Every single joy I experience, Lord, this is all for your glory. You know, like, oh, how much at just the start of your day could change the start of my day. Again, I'm talking to myself. The start of my day change. If I roll over just like you, Crystal, and get on my knees and say, Lord, this day is yours. And I think that's so easy, guys. It's so simple, right? It's so simple to, to give him that minute. It's a minute. That's all. Um, yes, v Vina, I want to hear all about your reminders. Tell me like what time your reminders are at and I'll kind of show where my reminders are too. I just have one for now. Let's, yeah, let's be real. Um, yes, we literally have nothing more important to do than pray. We have nothing more important to do than give glory and honor to the Lord who gave us life. 
to the Lord who gives our children life, to the Lord who gives our husband life, to the Lord who gives our family life, our grandmothers, our, our, our cousins, everyone, guys, like to the Lord who gives us breath. We have nothing more important to do than to give him honor and glory. And that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm like, what, how have I been so in my head and, and gotten so backwards in my thinking of like, Lord, I need to serve you. I need to do all these things and then I'll fit you into my schedule and then I'll have time for you. Once, um, once I, I find a babysitter or once I, um, gosh, I don't even know. Once, once I figure this one thing out, Lord, then I'll have time for you. No, I think it's the opposite. I think it's, I make time for you. I lean in with you, God. I, I realize that you are the source. You are the source by which all else exists. My life, not just grand scheme, how the world exists, guys. You personally, your life has a source and that source is Jesus Christ. And how much I want to realize that all of this clicks, all of this ultimately makes sense and gives me joy and gives me incredible peace if I just lean into my source, if I just lean into the light that gives me light, that gives me life. And I just want to share that with you guys so much. Yes, you're being pulled more and more into prayer, Elsa. I'm with you, girl. Okay, Jane, tell me more of your reminders. My first reminder of the day is a morning offering. Yes, I love that. Vina is a teacher. So you set reminders all throughout your day for a Hail Mary or a Jesus prayer in between classes. I love that. Before tougher classes, I remember, remind, remind myself to offer the time for his glory. Yes. Oh my gosh, guys, this is so good. Please keep sharing them. Um, Jane, share your reminders too. I would love to hear about that. Okay, so step one, I think, to really, how do I start to have a prayer routine is looking at your planner, is looking at your day. And again, realizing that all these other to-do lists, all these other things that need to get done, they're not going to be done with joy. They're not going to be done with uh, peace if we're not leaning into the Lord first or if we don't know, you know, If you get all your stuff done and then you say at the end of my workday at five, before I get home and the rest of, you know, chaos begins, whether it be getting together with friends, whether it be going to a prayer group, whether it be um, coming home to kids or a husband or to make dinner, if on your way home, there's a chapel and you just stop by again, five minutes, he's the source. He is everything. And not even, guys, that we have to feel something when we see him. I think ultimately we do. I think ultimately we run to the chapel. I think ultimately we want, we can't help but want to get in there. But at first it might not feel like that. At first it might just feel like I'm recognizing and I'm accepting the truth that you are the source, so I am here. That doesn't mean you have to feel a ton of consolation today. Today might just be step one. Today might be our step one. So I, really just looking at your, at your schedule, where can, I, where can my source have five minutes? Okay, so whether, again, it be on your way home from work. Um, my husband shared that when he would get home from work when he was single, he lived with five guys, guys. It's so funny how so many guys can just live together and they're like happy-go-lucky. Anyway, he lived with five other adult males before we got married and he said I'd roll I'd get into the driveway and before I went into the house because I knew it was just crazy you know it's five guys living together where they're having fun they're hooting and hollering whatever before I walk in the house he went into the side yard and he sat down and he did a rosary and he um would listen to worship music and he would just be in silence and that was his okay rosary is a little bit longer than five minutes but that was his 20 minutes just getting home from from work every day. So I think that this is possible. Okay, I want to read more about your um, alarms. Okay, Lori, I am with you. That is my alarm. 
Um, I have an alarm for the Angelus as well. Do you do two alarms, Lori? I want to hear um, how many alarms you do for the Angelus. I have an, this is Deborah. I have an alarm set on my watch for the Angelus at noon and another at three for a Divine Mercy chaplet. I love that. Um, the Hallow app. I just heard about that. I want to hear more about it, Jocelyn. Share more, please. Um, okay. So again, let's look at our planners. Let's be honest about what we have going on today and see where we got five minutes for the source of all creation, for the light with which all other light comes from. We can make five minutes. We can do it. Um, stopping at noon to pray the Angelus, three for divine mercy, liturgy of the hours. We have so much as Catholics to sanctify every hour of the day. Oh my gosh, Victoria, so true. Lori, I love that. So do you do, um, Lori, for the Angelus, do you do 6 a.m., uh, noon, and then 6 p.m.? Um, are those your Angelus times? I'm curious. Okay, so number two on how to start a prayer routine. After we've really looked at our day and we've said, all right, where is my five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour? Where is that going to be every single day? It might be different every day. I think for me, my prayer routine has to be the same every single day. So um, just talking out loud, I think the beginning of my day is the morning offering. I got to get that print up on my wall. Guys, I have like a million prints in my garage, but I don't put it on my wall. God put it on my wall. Got to get a frame for it. Um, so put it on the wall and every day I wake up, get on my knees and I do the morning offering. Lord, this day is yours. Yes. Okay. I think right after my kids go to school, that's when my prayer is. I sit down with my coffee and I get out my scripture and that's where I'm going to have time to pray. Okay. But step one, where's your time to pray? Okay. Step two is where do you feel most at peace when you pray? Sorry, not location. I mean, what are you doing when you felt the most peace in your life? I think we can even go back in memory. I think, I think our memories are so important. I think the Lord has spoken so much to us in our lives and we forget so much. So I am encouraging you today, I'm encouraging myself to hop in the shower if you need some silence and that's the only place you can get it. But I think two minutes of silence to think about a memory and a time that you felt the most at peace, a time when you felt uh, the most joy, a time, I, I tend to say this, this language, the time you felt most alive. What were you doing with God when that happened? When I felt the most alive, I was in worship. I love praise and worship. You know, the catechism tells us to praise our God. The Psalms are all David's songs to the Lord. And I relate so much to song, especially worship songs. Most worship songs are from scripture. They're from the Bible. And I have felt most alive when I'm praising our God and worshiping our God through song and through my lips. So that's a place I feel most alive. But where do you feel most alive? Where is it that you feel the most peace? If I go back to where do I feel the most peace, without a doubt, I have felt the most peace in Eucharistic adoration. Without a doubt. There is silence there. There is palpable grace there. You wanna know why? Because the source of all light, the source of all life is right there in front of our eyes. There's peace. That's just the truth. That's just the Lord. There's peace. So without a shadow of a doubt, I can look back on my life. I can look back on whether it be last week, whether it be when I was 16 years old at a retreat. Where did I feel peace? Eucharistic adoration. Where did I feel most alive? In worship. So I encourage you to do this. I encourage you to sit for two minutes and say, Lord, just think back, where did you feel peace? And I think that's how the Lord speaks to you. I think that's his special habit that he does just with you. That's his special place of connection that he has just with you. You guys, when I was a kid, I have such beautiful memories 
of laying down on the couch with my dad and we would read books together. And I would read one side of the page and he would read another side of the page, just like chapter books. And we just sat together. And if I think about where did I feel most at peace with my earthly father, without a shadow of a doubt, I felt the most at peace laying there on the couch, being seen by my dad, being loved by my dad, uh, having his presence palpable right next to me. That's where I felt the most at peace. That's where I felt the most known. That's where I felt the most safe. That's where I felt the most secure was in the arms of my earthly father. And we have that with our heavenly father. We have palpable moments of peace, palpable moments of of being known, of being secure, of being safe. And we might not even realize it because we don't quiet ourselves down to remember when that was. Life is spinning. Life is going. Our circumstances are crazy. And they're not, I always think, Lord, when my circumstances improve, that's when I'll have time for prayer. No. No. He wants peace for me right now. He wants peace for you right now. So that's step two. So step one, we're getting out our planners today. Step two is looking back on our lives and seeing where we felt the most peace, where we felt the most alive. Those could be two different things. Those could be the same thing. Beth Davis, so glad you're here. So I think that's step two, is seeing where the Lord just treasures us, because he treasures you, and it's somewhere, and it's in your memory, and I know it. And if it's not in your memory, you can find it today. You can have it today. It can be the five minutes of silence that you have today. Wow, that's my place of connection. It could be the five minutes you spend in Eucharistic adoration. That's your connection. I'm so encouraged and brought to life by the idea of each one of us spending five minutes in peace and surrender with the God of the universe who looks right at you. I am brought to my knees in my soul at the thought of each one of us letting our minds be at peace enough to rest in the arms of our Father. If you don't have a memory of peace, He wants to give you that today. He wants to give you that gift of peace today. I know it. So if your place of connection is the rosary and you feel the most at peace and you feel joy walking through scripture with Mary and with Jesus, that's your place. If your place of connection is in the liturgy of the hours, if your place of connection is prayer journaling, that's it. So those five minutes that we find, those 20 minutes that we find in our planner today, that's step one. Step two is, where's your place of connection? Some people vividly hear from the Lord. Some people walk incredibly and and have beautiful imaginations and, and can get so much life from the rosary. Some people love praying through the Psalms and walking with David. You have a special something with God. You have a special place of connection with God and he's gonna give it to you. And all we have to do is be quiet enough to experience it. Okay, step three, you guys, I am having memory loss, please pray. What's my step three? Oh, oh, I remember, okay, okay. This is the best part. So we got step one. We got step one is looking in your planner. Step two is where's your place of connection, right? So whether it be prayer journaling, whether it be rosary, whether it be whatever it may be. I don't know. It's your special thing with God. Here's step three, guys. This is it. Are you ready for this? 
Step three is just start. Just start. Like, like, it doesn't have to be a crazy formula. We just have to start. I just need to stop talking about it. Beth Davis has heard me talk enough about spending time with the Lord in prayer, how I feel convicted in X, Y, Z. My friends have heard me talk about it enough. Maybe you've talked about it with your friends. But today it's just starting. It's just five minutes of prayer. It's just five minutes of connection. And we are held by the Father. And so I'm so excited. I'm sorry if that's a letdown for you, that step three is so simple and not some crazy formula that equals like the biggest monumental thing ever. But let me tell you, this is the formula for the biggest monumental shift in our lives. This is it. This is it. It's making time for the source of all life. Figuring out how that source wants to connect with us and then doing it. That's it. And you know what happens in our lives? You know what's going to happen in my life? I am going to come alive. I am going to have joy emanating from the very inside of myself. You are going to have joy coming out. Your circumstances that feel like crazy, that feel like they overwhelm you, my circumstances that overwhelm me, that give me great anxiety, that give me great stress, those are all rightly ordered by the source of my life, by the person who gives me light and life. There's this girl, her name is Stephanie, and she says this beautiful thing. She says, when you're plugged into heaven, the power is always on. When we're plugged in to our source, our power is always on. Our circumstances are not, no longer too much because we're walking with our Father. We are held by our Father. And I'm so excited for what's going to come, for you to have that experience with the Lord, for you to have peace. Maybe you haven't felt peace in so long. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you love. He wants you to look at him who's been looking at you. And that's where, that's where life comes from. That's where, that's where all else falls into place. And again, it's not to say there's not suffering. It's not to say there's not pain. It's not to say there's not death and sin and and hard times. But we're plugged into the source. I mean, the idea, guys, I really struggle with loneliness. I've struggled with loneliness. I, I remember so much, especially of my like young adult life, of feeling surrounded by people, feeling like I had a full life. I, I looked like I had a full life. But there was something in me that was lonely. There was something in me that felt empty. And God fills that up. He fills up the loneliness. He fills up my, my desire for connection because he gets connected to me, because I plugged into the source. And we're going to be women on fire. We're going to be women lit up. We're going to be women living our lives in total surrender to the source of all life. And you know what changes the world is women like that, is people like that. I truly believe We don't even have to go there. We don't even have to go to the world changing, guys. You know what has to change? Us. And you know the way to do it? These three steps. Monumental shifts in our lives. So I'm pumped. I'm excited. Let's see what you guys have to say. I also wanted to, I kind of came on here also to like 
tell you about my prayer routine for Lent, but I'm almost thinking that's like a different video. Um, so I'm excited. Please share with me your three things. What, what time is your time today that you're going to have with the Lord? Is it five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? What's your place of connection? And did you get started? Let's do those three check marks. I'm going to go pray right now. I'm going to do it right now so I can come back to this comment section and tell you guys that I did it. I'm your accountability today. All of you watching, you got to tell me when you're doing it. What are your three things? What time? Where's your place of connection? Did you do it? Did you start? We're going to start. We're going to be women on fire. We're going to be women who are connected to the source of all life. And I'm super excited. Thanks for joining me.